Uh, actually, I stop ask a question. I ask you that if you have got three vessels, and in which vessel the pressure would be more? I hope more. Everyone has a question. Okay, two vessels. Sorry, not three. Right? A and P. One is like a test tube. The other is like a bucket. Did you think about it? Okay, so there were two points A and B, I believe. Right? A at the bottom of the test tube and B at the bottom of the bucket. Right. So, who says pressure at A is more? Okay, so that means everyone else is saying pressure at B is more. Who says neither?
give a very good, very simple example, then we'll derive it from it. Let's say there's some fluid, fluid in a vessel. So if you think of one point here, A, and exactly at the same height, B, and let's say this is a cylindrical beaker, right? Imagine it. Okay. So do you realize that there's going to be a lot of points like this which are at the same height? Do you agree with what I have drawn? Clear? You can imagine a circle on that surface or anywhere inside, inside of your like this. Right? So all these points are at the same height. The pressure at each of these points is going to be is going to be same. Clear? Because they are all at the same depth. Understood? Okay. So we say that the pressure is independent of the direction. That is whether you are finding the pressure over here, or over here, or over here, or over here, it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. The pressure is going to be same. So this is what this property is about. But this is not a formal derivative. You can derive it and find a different manner. Right? With a proper step. So let's say that I'm drawing a fluid. There is some fluid in some vessel. And if you would imagine, if you uh, recall earlier, we talked about an imaginary cylinder when we wanted to discuss how pressure changes with depth. Similarly, this time we are going to draw an imaginary prismatic shape. Now, what's an imaginary prismatic shape? I'll make you imagine. Think of a triangle. One face is a triangle. And you imagine that suppose there is another triangle behind this triangle and you join them and you make this shape of a box, like an inclined plane, if you think. Do you understand what this is? Okay, this is prism. This is what a prism looks like. Right? Okay, it's not a pyramid. See, pyramid is different. Pyramid is like this. I hope you got what I've drawn. Right? This is the prism. Two triangles and then four rectangles. Excuse me, three rectangles. Two triangles and three rectangles. That's what makes this shape. So let's say it's like that. And now I'm going to say that these three sides or three uh, three faces, you understand what is a face? For example, if you think of this room, this room has one, two, three, four, five, six faces, walls. Right? So, if you think of the wall on the right side, that's number one, the wall at the bottom, let's say number two, and this slant, number two. Right? Let's say we think of these two. And let's say this is a small prism, okay, not like a giant one, right? Very tiny, ideally infinitesimal. And we just have to imagine, right? You don't have to make it, you just have to imagine. So, if you imagine these three, one, two, and three. But I am drawing it large over here, so you can see. So, do you understand that on this side, the pressure will be P1, and the, suppose this area is A1. So, do you agree that this is going to be force P1 A1? Yes or no? Yes. Just like we did it for cylinder. Similarly, from the bottom, over here there is going to be a force P2 A2. Agreed? Absolutely clear. And from here, on this side, on this face, the force is going to be P3. Absolutely clear. Okay. If you consider that some of this angle is theta. Okay. The angle over there is theta. So, if this is 90, what is this angle? 90 minus theta. Complement. Right? So, so, we have these things. So, now I am going to find out how much is F1, how much is F2, and how much is F2? Right. Okay. And again, if this is an imaginary thing here, everywhere there is this fluid, and you are not disturbing it, so you could write for this imaginary prism to be in equilibrium. Just like we took it for the cylinder, it was imaginary. Suppose we take this imaginary prism and let's say nobody is disturbing anything, that is fluid is kept as it is. Let's say you filled up a bucket of water. Nobody is touching. So it is in equilibrium. Correct? 
So if this is in equilibrium, then all the forces should balance out. Correct? Only then anything comes in equilibrium. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll take these three forces out of this diagram and I'll draw them separate. Okay. So that you will be find it easier to make components. So let's roughly draw axes like x and y. So do you agree that force P1A1 is in this direction? Yes or no? Similarly, do you agree that the force P2A2 is in this direction? Right? And the force P3A3 is somewhere here. Correct? The force P3A3 is somewhere in that direction. What at what angle? See, here you have got here you have got 9 minus theta, here you have got theta. So we will have to find out what is this. Right? That we can draw easily or that we can find easily. But suppose this is that surface, a hypotenuse. Let's say this is that surface. So we know that the angle here is theta. So do you agree that this angle should be theta? Pair of alternate angles. Clear? With these two sides parallel. Understood? Yes or no? With the vertical, here you are getting theta. Here 90 minus theta, so right? theta. So if this is theta, this is 90, normal, don't forget, force is perpendicular. If this is, 90, uh, this is theta, then this is 90 minus theta, and so this is theta. Clear? We have done this earlier, these kind of things in laws of motion chapter. Right? So theta, 90 minus theta, and theta once again. I am not writing 90 minus theta because I don't want the diagram to become extremely untidy. So now, once we have these forces, we are going to take components of P3A3. So next diagram. P1A1, right side. P3A3 cos theta. Clear or not clear? P3A3 cos theta. Component of which force? Of this force. In which direction? Next step. Yeah, so then a component gets it or not? I hope so. Okay. Downward component, how much? P3, A3, sine. And upward there is already one force which is P2, A2. Okay, so now time to complete the sentence. X and then the That's what physics is. Right? So much to do. Just writing words isn't enough for physics. You have to calculate things. So, so I have for equilibrium. On x-axis, what should I write? I would expect answers from you, especially when things are easy. Right? Come on. What do you have on x-axis? B1, A1 equal to B3, A3 cos theta. Okay. So this is what x. Now for y, come on. P2A2 equals P2A3 sin theta. Very good. Now, let me use some geometry. Based on these three, I hope you understand that given that there is a right angle triangle here, okay, given that there is a right angle triangle here. I want you to note things down, okay? I will not give you separate time. I am making it very clear. Okay, normally if things are very long, I will wait for you for a few minutes. But normally I expect that you would write as I explain. Because I never go that far. Okay, and it's not like you have to write a lot. You go to like which angle? You see that. You know, it becomes tough when every teacher has a different methodology. Again, the key things are diagram. In our money, no, our Okay, so make it a habit. Okay. So 
we have got these two equations, one for x, one for y, for the equilibrium of this prism. Now, let's continue further. Looking at this shape, looking at this shape, we are going to have that a1 is equal to a3 cos theta. Do you agree with that? Raise your hand if you do. Raise your hand if you agree, if you understood that. Look at this shape. Okay, let me go to the basics. See, suppose this has a thickness t, 3d my imagine gone on the short one of them they will have a depth much over. This is t. Can you imagine that? Right? So that's t. Now suppose this side is L1, this side is L2, and the hypotenuse of that is so do you agree that a1 is equal to l1 into t because l1 is a rectangle, a1 is a rectangle, do you see that? Similarly a2 is going to be l2 into t, similarly a3 is going to be l3 into t, I hope that's clear. If it's not, I cannot do anything. Okay? Yeah, so you get this. Now, do you realize that there is a simple relation between L1 and L3 and that is by cos theta equal to L1 by L3, yes or no? So cos theta is L1 by L3. So that's why what is L1? That's why what is L1? L3 cos theta. Let's put it here. So this would become L3 cos theta into t. Now what is L3t? So when you combine all of that, what do we get? Understood? Clear? When you don't understand maths, use more maths to explain. Okay, that's how it works. So, because we have a1 is a3 cos theta and similarly a2 is equal to a3 sin theta. I hope now you are not surprised by this. A2 is equal to A3 sin theta. Use these two relations in the two equations that we got here. Right? Okay, so from the x equation, what do we get? We from the x equation we got that T1 A3 cos theta equal to B3 A3 cos theta. Okay. From the x equation, this is what you get. Yes or no? Found the then. Yes, I'm telling you. This is the value of A1. Right. You, you really don't know how, confused, uh, how much of a dilemma is it for you. Short ka samjha ho, to nahi samjha. Lamb ko samjha ho, is tada lomongi dho. Perfect then. So P1, A1 equal to P3, A3 cos theta. A3 cos theta, A3 cos theta is going there. And what have we proved? And similarly, we will also prove P2 equal to P3. In short, we prove that all the three are equal. But on this one, the pressure is independent of that pressure. No problem. Pressure will be same. Yeah. What we have actually derived here is only valid for a small prism. For a small height, uh, sorry, for a small object like this. Again, if you say that you have got some water in a vessel and you put such a large prism and then you say that pressure here and here and here and here everywhere equal, that's wrong. I change that. I hope that makes sense. That's the reason of taking infinite symbol or very small prism. Got it? So, just remember that sentence. Right? Pressure is independent of direction. Okay. So we take everything on the board. Okay. Now, I think uh, we should solve a few questions from the textbook. Okay. Example ten point one.
the two thigh bones with our femur each of cross sectional area 10 cm square so let's say that these are the two thigh bones right okay all of you have got a pair so with what cross sectional area how much area is this cross sectional area 10 10 cm square okay then what else and support the upper part of the human body of mass 40 kg right so above this right the mass of the body above this portion is how much 40 kg right. now the question is how much pressure would be there estimate the average pressure right so it's quite simple isn't it the 40 kg mass is actually supported on two femurs correct Right. So do you agree that if I want to find the pressure and just have to find out how much weight it applies, right? So do you agree that the weight is going to be 20 G? Why 20 G? Why not 40 G? We have to find it for each femur, each bone. You understood that? So two bones together support 40 kg. One bone, 20. Clear? So 20. Is it fine? Divided by area, how much area? 10 centimeters square. So, get the answer quickly. Come on, take D to be 10. What the answer? Thank you. Thank you. 10, 10 cancer. 2 are like 2 into 10 raised to 5. Okay, 4. D divided by 4. At 10 per year, 0 divided by 10. 2 into 10 raised to 5 pass. Clear? Okay, so that's the first example. Typical textbook level. What will have to answer away? Mark, mark. Okay. Example 10.2. Homework. Okay. Now, example 10.3. The density of the atmosphere at sea level. Okay, density of atmosphere, that is air. What is the density of air at sea level? It is 1.29 kg per meter cube. See, air is also a fluid. Right? So, gas. Gases are fluids. So, make note rho is equal to. See, I'd like to advise everyone. Suppose we are doing something and you lag behind. Suppose you couldn't finish this in time. Then my suggestion is to leave that question. Do it at home. I'll tell you why I'm suggesting that. But suppose you don't follow what I'm doing and instead of that, if you still write this, then you'd not know the next one, correct? Then when I've done, when I've finished explaining that next one, we would have we'd go to the next one but you'd still be writing the previous one. So that way you're going to miss out on all the numerals. Would you like that to happen? No, better option, leave this one. And then continue with me, with the next one. Agreed? That way you only miss out on one. Better option, don't you see? Unless your goal is to only write and not to understand it. Which I don't think is true. So, next one, that is number three, chapter 10, number three. So what does the question say? Uh, the density of the air at uh, sea level is this much. Okay. Assume that it does not change. So we are assuming that density is one third, like in compression. Okay. See, this is an assumption. It's false. Air is definitely compressible. Neither the scooter is not. Okay. Then how high would the atmosphere extend? Some of you would be thinking, "Anya, the scooter is too level. Bona bona, I can't jump up." Right? So, 10.3 question. Rho is given. How much is rho? 1.2. 1.29. Kg per meter cube. So, less, isn't it? 1 meter cube of air. That's how much mass? Only 1.2 kg. On the other hand, 1 meter cube of water has mass 1000 kg. Right? Big difference. 
right? So this is density. Now the question is, we have to find suppose this is sea level or the ground. Let's say in here is atmosphere. So if we assume density is constant, then how high is this atmosphere? That's the question. Okay. Remember, this is assumption. This does not remain constant. So don't try to think that atmosphere is only this side. That's wrong. Okay. But let's solve. So we know the pressure over here. Let's call this point P. What's P D? 1 atm. Yes or no? Obviously. Confused or clear? <laughs> pressure at the ground level or the sea level is how much? 1 atm, isn't it? So P D is 1 atm. Now if you go high to the atmosphere, let's say atmosphere ends here. Suppose. What's above this? Think about it. This is where atmosphere ends. What's above that? What do you think about? So what do you think is there? Away from it or beyond that? One people. Vacuum, yes. There is nothing. That is, there is vacuum. Right? Is vacuum a fluid? No. Vacuum cannot apply pressure. It's not a material. So the pressure over here is zero. Who understood that? I'll tell you why. Maybe you need an explanation. Above this, there is nothing. So, what will apply force on? What is it? Force apply to the pressure. Does it make sense or not? You go under water. The deeper you go, the more the pressure becomes. Why? Because there is more and more water above your head. But if you go here, what's above your head? Nothing. So, what will apply pressure? Clear or not clear? Sure. Yes. Okay, so PA, how much is PA? <laughs> right? Based on this, can you find the height H? Yes. What should we do? How to solve this? How to solve this? <laughs> Use the standard formula, isn't it? PT equal to? Yes. Do it, come on. You have two minutes only to finish this problem. Don't forget to convert 1 ATM into Pascal. And you can put 1 into 10 raised to 5. I don't care for that 0 0.01 and all that. Okay? Use this density, 1.29. Again, if possible, try to do it without calculator. Right? See, although I tell you to do it without calculator, someday I'm going to say, show your calculators. And if you don't have it, you are going to be out of the club. Right? So make sure you get it as soon as possible if you don't have it. You can turn the book, no problem. It would be more comfortable. Done. Unit. Two unit. Gram. 
तो आंतरज्ञ कहवा यूनिट वगैरह आंतर ये नहीं भव्य तो भव्य वोट योर आंसर सेम एज इज बट इज आंसर इज रॉन्ग डू वॉन्ट टू से इज द सेम आंसर डिड यू राइट द यूनिट नो यूनिट कैम बुरी जा तू थैंक यू वेल लेट यू एंड पी बी इज इक्वल टू पी ए प्लस रो जी एच सो पी बी वॉट पी बी ओके ओके इट्स जस्ट अ मैटर ऑफ कैलकुलेशन आने देने 1,129 एंड 1 इनटू 10 मूवी ओके सो दिस गोइंग बी 12 दिस नियरली 13 13 इनटू 7 सो दैट इज गोइंग बी 9.0 माइनस
the depth of 1000 p. We have to find what the pressure here. So standard pp would be a plus rho g s. We have done this earlier, haven't we? Yes. Cut an answer. What's the answer? 1.01 into 10 to the 2? Okay. Fast right? So this is going to be 101 atm. Am I right? This is going to be 101 atm because if you shift this here and you make this 5, so 101, 10 raised to 5 is going to be 1 atm. Right? So 101 atm is that pressure. Part B. Now I believe part B is about gauge pressure. G A U G E, gauge pressure. Correct? So, what is gauge pressure? Let me explain. Okay, so we are continuing the same pressure in part B. First of all, let me tell you the definition of gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is simply pressure minus. Could it be easier? Don't you think? Gauge pressure means the pressure minus 1 atm. Okay, another name for gauge pressure is excess pressure. Excess means extra. I'm sure you understand that. Right? Not A double C, E X. Right? Excess pressure. That is what extra. Clear? Extra compared to what? Extra compared to atmospheric. For example, look at this. So this is 1 atm, so that much is atmospheric pressure, no problem. Whatever is extra, this is extra, don't you think? Sure, that extra is the you know what? Gate pressure or ball pressure, whatever you call it. Right? Understood? Okay, so you can in fact you can say that in such situations you can always write it as is it here? So this is 101 atm. How much will be gauge pressure? 100 atm. Done. Okay, so this, this is the important definition. And here is the answer of this question. 100 atm is the P excess. I, I like to write it like this. P excess. Book's answer is different. Don't worry about that. Why is the book's answer different? You'll understand if you read the last slide. They have written that density of sea water, they have not taken it exact one, they have taken it to be 1.03. So, for a, for a kind of calculation, so all of that method remains same. So, we are not going to do it. If you want to do it, definitely do it at home, no problem. If you don't get the answer, then you come to me, I'll help you. Right? But I believe we have only discussed it, there's no need to repeat. Okay, so that's done. Let's go to exercise. Okay, question 5 is homework. Question 5 from the exercise is homework. Okay. Now, uh, let's all question 7. We'll have to leave the 6th one. I have not taught you that concept yet. It's related to this formula, I said, but we have not done. So, 10.7. A vertical offshore structure. Do you know that uh, where we get this crude oil from is actually deep in the ocean? You know that? You don't get a lot of crude oil from land. You get a lot of crude oil from sea. Right? And what they do is they put giant vessels and from those vessels they pass down digging machines. Right? So this kind of a structure is called offshore structure. Offshore means away from the shore, that is in the sea. Right? So vertical offshore structure is built to withstand a maximum withstand that is bare, handle. Right? Handle a maximum stress. How much stress? 
10 raised to 9 Pascal. I hope you remember that when it's about fluids, right? Fluids apply force from all directions. Okay, and that means this kind of stress is called pressure. Do you remember previous chapter? Three kinds of stress. Longitudinal, shearing, and third one is pressure. Correct? Longitudinal for length. Shear for angle. And pressure for volume. Compressing from all sides. So that's what this is, right? So the pressure is given. How much maximum pressure it can handle? 10 raised to 9. Write it. P max equal to 10 raised to 9 bar. Okay, then it says something else. Is the structure suitable for putting up on the top of an oil well in the ocean? Take the depth of the ocean to be roughly 3 km. So what's given? The whole ocean is how much deep? 3 km. Three and you have to put that vertical structure. Let's say this is that vertical structure and we have to put it inside water directly onto the ocean bed. Support to join it. Mnem to waves away gam kyam thai jai. You understand what I say? So it has to go all the way to the depth of the ocean, to the bed. Bed so much pade, ocean bed. Right? So how much deep should it go? 3 km. And there it should not break. Suppose it will be pressure, it will be useless. Is it it? So, the question is, is it suitable? That is, if it goes to a depth of 3 km, will it break due to pressure or will it not? That's what we have done. Okay, when does this thing break? When the pressure becomes equal to or more than 10 raised to 9, right? So, all we have to check is that suppose you think of a point which is very deep in the ocean, let's say over here. If the pressure over here becomes 10 raised to 9 Pascal or more, then this structure will break. Understood? Sure? So, what we have to check is, what's the pressure here? If it's more than 10 raised to 9, break. Less than 10 raised to 9, 6. Clear? How to find pressure at this depth of 3 km? How to find pressure? How do we find pressure? Same formula. What's the formula? P equal to PA plus rho J. And don't you think this chapter is once again quite different from the first big 6? Right? Where formula is not that important. Understanding the question is very important. But here, every time we are using the same thing again and again and again, right? So do it, come on. How much will be the pressure at 3 km depth? Is density of water given in question? Is density of water given in question? No, then if because it's sea water will take 1.03. Okay. This time let's do it with calculator. Come on. Okay, first of all, how many of you have calculator right now? Very good. I really like it. Take a little bit, but it's almost not that late. What do you want to do? Please draw a diagram. Do you also note that we found excess pressure as 100? 
So what that means is every time you go one kilometer deep, the pressure will increase by hundred. So hundred, 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 three hundred. This is much more work. Okay. रूल लाइक अवर माइंड ब्रेकेट करवा ब्रेकेट था No, thank you. So it, it all makes a difference. And please try that. This is your first and last calculator that you are going to use in two years. So, my amuk senior, so there are quite a few people like now. Okay, two tickets. It will do. I will try no. It will do. So, please try to. Protect it. I hope you have finished it. How many of you have? How many of you have finished it? Okay, very good. Okay. 
and let's say that the tube is closed from one end. The tube is closed from one end. You fill it with water by whatever way you like. You dip it inside and fill it. You can pour water in it and fill it completely to the brim. Right? Fill it completely. And then you close it. You invert it. Like this. And then you let your thumb go. So the tube will be like this. Correct? And let's say somehow by putting some stand or something, you mold it. Make sense? Or you ask someone, someone else to hold it while you are doing it. Anyway. What do you think will happen to this water that was in the tube? At the start it would be like this. Really when you just put your thumb over here, it's still closed. It's going to be like this. Yes or no? Now you let it go. What will happen? What will happen? What will happen to the water? Pick up, raise your hand, come on people, it's fine. Have you ever seen any kind of experiment, I mean this kind, have you seen such a thing ever? Anyone doing anything similar, have you ever seen it? No, then whatever you are saying would be partly based on what you have seen around yourself, correct? And it's okay, we can, we can get things wrong. So, can you tell me what will happen? What is the What do you think will happen? Come on. But is it that your own answer seems very you know? Very strange to you. Are you going to say that when you open this up, all the water in this vessel will go into the tube? What are you going to say? Are you going to say that when you open this, this tube will go up like a rocket? Okay, okay. Should you just fall down? Cam number. Describe your experiment. Water ma pani ne. Pachi? Am ban ke. Pachi mundi ke. Pachi am ne chhod diyo. To no problem. Kal to le aur dekh water. Barabar. Apne gaye. Barabar ne. Pakku ne. Kya water hai? So now he is going to do some magic. Okay. Kya water hai? Standard regular water or anything special? One centimeter. Okay, so slightly narrow opening obviously that is required. That's also the same thing I said here, it has to be narrow. Right? The broader it is, the more chances that this experiment will go wrong. Okay. Fine. Suppose you do something similar, let's say. But not with a fully filled tube or this body. Okay, this is your body. Let's say you know where. Invert it, put it here. What will happen? Same, same experiment, only one difference. This time, it's empty. Half of it, empty. Half of it, filled. What will happen? I can know that. Test tube name. Rowan gave them water. Nani water. Do you think? You use that, right? Okay. Try it like that. 
Same thing for care with some water photography later. Some research done. Right? I'm serious, really. Doing such experiment will really improve your understanding of how nature works. Right? Thankfully, this still 